I started coming into Charleston, I think mid 20, right at the end of COVID. So latter part of 2020, I think it was. And I had hosted someone that had said, God is gonna show you a territory if you just let your heart open it's going to send you to establish something and it was around Memorial Day or so that we came we went into Savannah we went into we came here and immediately when we crossed the border I knew that this is where God was sending me I wasn't looking for another job. I had enough. My hands were full. But I recognized the voice of God when he speaks to me. We started coming. We sowed communion into the land. And all of those things, we took some of the tours. Not all of them, but some. And I'm telling you this for a reason. So I've been walking around with this understanding of Charleston, what it means to people of color. See, I have to talk to you from where I live, not from a place of condemnation, because what I'm going to tell you is going to be really good. My name is a reminder to my family that we came from slavery. One of my ancestors was owned by a woman named Venner. So we're talking about breaking down walls of division. There has to be truth in the room. And he is the way, the truth, and the life. And so we've been passing this name along in our family. I have a niece named Venner. I have a couple of nieces actually named Venner. Whenever people ask us where the name comes from, we testify. Because the woman that owned my ancestor happened to be kind for as much as that can be and you're in bondage. You can't make decisions for your own life. You can't choose when you get up and when you lay down. Somebody else is choosing that for you. But she was kind. And she taught her how to read. And I believe that there was an anointing of education and learning that entered our bloodline and is still there. So, in 2021, I was just looking for a place to go for vacation, and a friend of mine called me and she said, you need to go to Ghana. What am I doing in Ghana? I don't know anybody. She said, just go. I have a connection for you. So I went. And I'm walking around this nation trying to figure out why am I there? Why did you send me all the way to the other side of the, of the globe? And I made several trips. Nine days ago, I was in Ghana. Nine days ago, I was standing at Cape Coast Castle. Mm, somebody knows. Cape Coast Castle is one of the locations where slaves were exported. And we're walking around, we're looking. And in part of the tour, we go through a door that over the door, it says, door of no return. I won't belabor the horrific details that surround the history of that place. And we're standing there looking out into the seaport and they're recognizing that we're African Americans, people that have come from across the water. And he says, historically, it was the door of no return but we wrote a new decree. And up over the door, it is the door of return.
They said, because you're returning now. I've been moving in an anointing of redemption. I couldn't make this stuff up if I tried. So while I was there for 15 days, we had made a donation to one of the, one of the I don't want to say village because then you'll think it's real rudimentary and it's not. But we made a donation to a school district. We established a computer lab. And you see England throughout the culture. Everything is a ceremony. So when I went back this past time, we were commissioning this lab. And one of the local chiefs was there. The elders were there. And I stood and I spoke. And when the ceremony was over, he walked up to me and he said, you need to live here with us. I'm, I'm from America. <laughs> and I smiled graciously. And he said, no, really. You need a place. You need to be established with us. He said to me, I am giving you land. I looked at him, I was like, okay, you're gonna give me some land? Three days later, we were in a ceremony and we were signing documents and he had given me land. He said, you build a house. And I'll do more than that. I'm gonna build a vocational center there. I went back to my apartment there and the Lord started talking to me. He said, Venner, this is not just a gift of land. He said, but you're moving in a moment of redemption. What was lost because your bloodline was stolen, I have bought that back to you. You now own land in a land that had your forefathers not left. You'd have had it anyway. And he said, when you tell this, he said, you tell them, people of color, I'm talking to you, that we're in a moment of redemption. That the door that I just walked through, you may not have been with me, but I want you to know that God is redeeming us. Bondage conditions you to a way of thinking and a way of being. But what God is doing Well, before I tell you that, look around this room. I want you to look just for a moment with human eyes. And then I'm going to talk to you through spiritual eyes. The balance in the room is off. Because we have not yet heard the clarion call of God. To understand that God is inviting us to the dinner table. God is inviting us to come out from the place of religion where we've been stuck because we don't trust can I say it we don't trust the words and so we're looking for our place at the table and we're waiting for certain people to invite us to the table but I want you to know that God himself has invited us to the table